<clears throat> hey, this is Peter. Um, going to jump right in and uh, get into some core food challenge scenario, um, which was in the Sit Rep 61 uh, by Admiral T Trilogy Group, um, makers of Harpoon, etc. <clears throat> Command at Sea and uh, Fear God and Dreadnought, etc. Others. Uh, great series of games. Uh, I'm going to jump into one of their the, their earlier time period uh, depicted um, rule sets, uh, Dawn of the Battleship. It's uh, one of my favorites. It's one of my favorite time periods. I love this time period. I love doing like what ifs up through with French and British and German and allies, etc. <clears throat> this is a great scenario in that it kind of introduces just about everybody uh, into one um melting pot of a scenario here uh so this was from sit rep 61 um i'm gonna read from there just a little bit i'm just gonna read a little bit of the introductory stuff and some of the special rules involved etc we're gonna go through the uh, forces here in a little bit uh so the situation is a border dispute between greece and albania uh has which has resulted in the creation of a international commission very similar to the International Squadron of uh, Crete uh, in the years past of this. The head of the commission is the Italian ambassador, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. The, there's issues, issues, issues. Um, France was alarmed by Italy's recent expansion in the Mediterranean and suspected Italy would not give back Corfu, even if Greece capitulated the demands, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Stuff happens. So let me just jump right into the tactical situation because that's what we're going to depict here. Uh, so the Italian Corfu squadron uh, is at anchor just off Kirkia uh, to support the occupation. Uh, during the night, in a heavy fog, the Corfu French squadron arrived and anchored much further out due to low visibility. When the fog began to clear near mid-morning the next day, the French and Italians were equally shocked to see the other squadron anchored quite nearby uh, and immediately cleared for action. Uh, meanwhile, the two supporting fleets were en route already and to support their comrades and to settle who was in charge of the Northern, Northern Ionian Sea, as stated in the scenario text. Try not to read too much out of this. All right, so we're going to go real quick through all the forces involved here. Uh, let's start with the French forces, the Corfu Squadron. So here's our lovely little tabletop simulator. Uh, this map, I think, was supplied by Tom N. The models were by Tom N. The flag, I think I had from Wiki. Uh, the fog, I think I got it from Black Seas or, or other modules that got it from Black Seas. Uh, the background so far, I think, was arm, from Armchair Dragoons, uh, Jim O in particular. Thank you. Uh, used without permission, but uh, there it is. Uh, these hills are live with the sound of music over here. And this music to be heard soon will be uh, our large caliber weaponry firing on the distance here. So this is just related to depict where the Corfu Island is kind of located in relationship. It's not really there. I'm just using it for a depiction. It's not really to scale. So uh, midday, early midday. Um, let's see what the scenario specifically states here because we're going to need it for later environment the wind is five knots from 350 true sea state is two visibility is 60 percent uh location we are at 11 30 hours local uh, the third of september 1902 kirkia corfu in the southern Ad adriatic sea northern ionian sea fiction fictional battle inspired by a dispute over the island of corfu that occurred in 1923 so just kind of retroactively um, set as a what-if. The Corfu squadron for the French uh, is depicted with the D'Entrecasteau um, Casteau, excuse me, D'Entrecasteau class cruiser, which is right here. Uh, there's also the Destroyer Division 2 in this, which is from a Yatagon, Peak, and Epe, which were all from a class destroyers, which again are depicted along this line here. I'll give you the French view as they awaken to, oh, not awaken, but some of them might be awakened at that watch hour. Um, from a Yatagon, Peak, Epe, 
and here's the cruiser don't uh don't I'm going to mispronounce things throughout deal with it all right so here's the french here's the uh italian uh, cruiser carlo alberto let me uh get the depiction the description of what those are uh yeah carlo alberto is a vester pisani class cruiser uh with it there are the destroyers Nembo, Zafiro, Espero, all Nembo class destroyers. I think I might have something wrong there. I thought I had too many. No, no. Nembo, Zafiro, and Espero. Um, as far as starting wise, after the you know after movement in the first turn, I did this in the past where the destroyers can fire from the front and the cruisers can fire, but then after that the fog will start to dissipate and things will get crazy. The thing to realize is these guys are starting at zero knots, so they're only going to be able to do a maximum acceleration of approximately three knots. Let's go look at a couple of these guys, see which ones they, what they can actually accelerate, etc. So the Alberto, that is Italy, Vettor Pisani Cruiser. Yeah, armor rating is 10F3. It's a size B medium. I think I got it for three. I think I think it's like three knots or so. Um, darn it, of course, I don't have the full sheets for these. I don't know if I did it all. Let's go look in the rules real quick. As far as their size and accelerations. Okay. Acceleration per tactical turn from the zero from zero to seventy five percent of max speed. Warship size class. These are Bs. These are okay. So fast. There's a differentiation in Dawn of the Battleship between slow and fast B class. A fast ship has a maximum speed of greater than or equal to 18 knots. So let's go look at what this is depicted as. Uh, speed of uh, Carlo, Carlo Alberto had a high speed of 18. So that is a fast one. So fast B can accelerate per tactical turn up to 4 knots. Uh, do the deceleration per up to six knots. Acceleration from 76 to 100 percent of max speed is two knots. Um, let's see, blah blah blah. Ship turning distances for B advanced with standard rudder is 300 knots. 300 yards, excuse me, uh, not knots. That would be quite fast. Uh, speed loss per 45 degree turn is uh, um, three degrees. Three, three knots. Okay. And advanced with a hard is 200. So I think everybody's a B or C on here. Let's go look at some of these destroyers or probably Ds. Mm -hmm. Nembo. E. That's an E. And they have a max speed of 30. So they, they're pretty darn good. Um, let's go look at the um, French destroyers. Oh, my class, I believe. Let's go look at that again. French, French, French. Yeah, from A class. And the Italians are all. Where are you, Italians? Nembo. So from A and Nembo. From A. From A, from A, from A, from A, from A. In my sheets, in my sheets. From A, where are you, from A? There we go. So the from A have a max speed of 26 knots. And they're also E. They have a front 65 millimeter 1891. And then the Nembo have um, hmm. two Fs and two P. Wait a minute. Oh. They have five total 57. Oh, Nembo's a little bit better. France has 
two port, two starboard, two port aft, two starboard aft. You have six of those, three pounders. Um, you know, 1885. Okay. Excuse me as I get myself together here. All right, so um, <clears throat> just in general, the French orders are to drive the Italians out of Caracchia and take possession of the town, engage the enemy upon sight. And that was the special rule. Any Italian battleship that is crippled 50% or greater damage must withdraw northward. Any French battleship that is crippled must withdraw southward. If both shot, if both battleships on one side are crippled, the entire force will withdraw. Okay, so definitely keep in mind. Possession, special rule. Uh, to have possession of Kirikia, France, French or Italian forces must have at least one ship anchored within 4K yards of kill yards of point x on them and at the end so within four thousand yards of basically right between the um the uh just awoken foggy ships there let's see let's go back to the french main fleet so that's approaching here from the Southeast, probably more so. All right, so then you got uh, two cruisers uh, of Charnay. I think they're both Amaral Charnay class. You have um, four destroyers here. I can't remember the class. Let's go look that up. Those are of the Dorondal class, so of that the lead ship shown there. So this Dorondal class. And then you have Massena and Brennus. Um, which are, I think, of their own class each, of their lead, they are the lead of their classes. Uh, then you have the Kassar, uh, Kasmao, and Patao, which are cruisers of what class? Uh, individual classes. The first one is a Dasa, the second is a Trude. Uh, Dasa, Trude class. Okay, I'm not going to be really too. Too well off your top of your head. Here is the Allied main body, as I'll call it. I'll just call these main bodies. They go by different names in this scenario. The Italians have uh, Re Re Umberto and Italia. Both are. Let's go look at the class, just in case it's. Uh, let's see. The battleships are Re Umberto class. The Italia is an Italia, and this one. Uh, the Italia, second in line here, is depicted as being with troops. So the assumption is that absolutely needs to survive uh, and eventually anchor within this, around this range here um, and be within the objective anchored by the end of the scenario. The assumption is being, the assumption being is that, you know, you're going to have to at least cripple probably one of the battleships on one of the, either of the side to force them to kind of shove off, if you will. All right. So let's go back over that and victory conditions. No Italian ships are anchored. No French battleship has been crippled. All right. Basically, both sides want to make sure they don't have one of their battleships crippled. Tactically, no French ships are crippled and no Italian ships are crippled. Okay, so just basically don't let your battleships get below 50% is the gist of it all right so let's take a general look overall at uh, some distances here this is this is quite close we are let's see the cruiser uh, firing on the cruiser is at 23 so that is these are 250 yards per inch you're at, at 5750 yards here which let's look at it from the perspective of the Italian Carlo Alberto. And I lost all my sheets. So let's look at Italy. Um, hmm. uh, Savetto Pisani. Yes, the Carlo, Carlo Alberto Savetto Pisani. All right. Um, so their primary weapons, um, 
our 152s, uh, A, 1891. I don't know if that's listed on the Corfu guns. Let's see. Uh, Italy, 1891. Yeah, there they are. Okay, so then uh, at range, at extreme, the penetration is four, long penetration four. Supreme is long and extreme four, medium penetration is six. These are considered quick fire, something to keep in mind for later. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see what well, we're we checking. The range was again 5750, and now I'm looking at my quick fire sheets here, getting a bunch of other junk out of the way. It's very difficult to um, juggle everything for some of these. All right. Looking for my ranges. Still not looking at my ranges. Here's my ranges. For 151. Hold on. It's 152 mil. Alright, so we're talking five So we're looking at extreme. There's only a 1% chance of hits at that point. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah, so this is pretty good distance even at the start of the match, but we're going to move to, so. All right. So enough jabbing. Uh, jabbering. Uh, start moving, everybody. Um, I'm going to kind of just quickly do this. Alright, so I think these guys are dead dead zero, so they can accelerate to <clears throat> it's just sitting there looking at it. Yep, yeah, here it is right here. Four knots. Fast ones can do four knots. Fast B's and then fast E's are slow E's. I think those are well, what the heck's the difference between them? I mean, they're all fast E's because. So the fast E's can go accelerate six knots. So all these guys can, can accelerate up to six knots. These guys are only two. Four knots. Okay. And then, so. Alright, let's just move everybody and then we'll start firing real quick. So these guys are going to go six knots. Let's go ahead and move those. Top, but these guys kind of accelerate to four knots. And the thing to keep in mind here too is especially from just from a course of action perspective is these guys have to go straight in order not to lose their acceleration that they just got um also i mean they see each other they they know they're at about medium range this is kind of a, this is a nasty situation i like this scenario i like i like scenarios that kind of force a particular situation and then allows dynamics for you know, the incoming these guys are going to be hurting here in a little bit. Um, and these guys all have torpedoes as well, I think. Let's go look at that. Yes, these are all the Vettor Pisani class cruiser has one bow and two and a uh, two on port and two on starboard. Um, these are. A60, 450, 450 millimeter torpedoes. They're not, you know, they're not as powerful as from in World War II era, of course, or even during that era. Um, you got to get really close. About five, I mean, of pretty much 500. You've got to be within a couple inches, really. Um, I don't even know what the full range is on some of these. Let's go look at that just for while we're thinking about it. 
So the 450, let's see if that's on the Uh, range is maximum 1100 if you set it at 25 knots for the B90 450. Is that what this guy has? B90 250, where the hell are you? <clears throat> what am I looking at? Oh, the cruisers have A sixty four fifties. So that's probably from Monroe Logs Legacy. Let's go keep going here. I I'll be honest, I, I wish that all the information that you needed for this scenario was in the scenario in the sit rep. Um but whatever, sorry for that critical statement, but it's kind of pain in the ass have to look up in a completely separate scenario book, all this stuff. Um, where, oh, where, there's the 6450, it's Italy. Okay, so that A6450 steel torpedoes have a max of 700 yards. So something to keep in mind. So the Italian cruisers can only, you know, only shoot out to about, let's say that's 250, that's 500. That's, you know, we're talking like this much, this range of torpedo. Again, nothing, this, we're not fully in scale here at all, but that's what we're talking about. They gotta get real close, which they might here in a little bit. So it's an interesting scenario because it basically sets you up for potential stabbing here, but it's not. I mean, you're still at medium range at this point. Let's go look at that again. Yeah. Let's see how close the destroyers are. 17 inches. They're at 4250. And 4250 is long range still. For that size, it's only 6% base, too. All right, so let's get all this crap going. So let's just get these guys. We're going to go 600. We're going to go at 6 knots, they're going to go 600 yards divided by 250. They're really only going to go 2.4 inches. Get these guys up, get these guys up. This guy's gonna go even smaller, which is 400 yards divided by 250 per inch is only 1.6 inches. So that's our lovely little um, advance here. The from a They can go max 26, they are E fast, so they can go six knots as well. He's kind of creeping forward as they have powered up. This guy is really only going to go out like that. I'll put these on the other sides of these. Make sure that is the black ship. So we'll get that. All right, so we're, we're moving. These guys are going to come up. Let's just, uh, let's just say we're at 15, just to make it a little quicker here. We're going to about at least six inches. Oh, 
up for now. I still, still think we're outside of extreme or if it's extreme is just ridiculously low percentage rate. There's Mark and the Princess William. Okay, so we've pulled up all the allied main body lines. And for the sake of speeding up the play, all right. So that's all. That's, I think definitely, they can't see because of the, the fog hasn't dissipated. Um, so within the first turn, I, I usually do it as 500 yards beyond beyond um, smoke or equivalent heavy smoke. Um, that's what I'm going to say the fog is. Uh, so you can go, I can't get beyond here really. Um, let's see. Did, I think I classified it as the cruisers could fire on each other in their, from their bow turrets. We will do that here in a moment. Take a look at, what are we talking about? We're talking about 41, 42, so that's um, so 42 by 250 gives you 10,500. I still think that's, let's see, for the Umberto battleship. Let's take a look at that. They have 13.5 inch 30 cal EOC pattern M. I don't know if that's on this one or not. 13.5 on here. Yeah, it is here. Okay, so it has a good the penetration value. Where are you? Oh, so it's a good Great Britain export. That's I mean, this is not what we want. We want the ranges at this range. And we just called that 10 5. Yeah, it's well, it's at outside extreme. All right, so these guys are well outside extreme. These guys are as well. Pretty much just going to give the cruisers a shot here, and then we'll start dissipating the fog next turn. We are at. I'm going to do a turret to front. All right, it's about like 20. To 20 by 250. We're around 5,000. It's probably extreme. <clears throat> we are at extreme. There's like a 2%. And let's just roll at this point. Cause... Do reds as the tens. Nope. Secondary is probably not even worth. All right. Well, the secondary one or secondary. Down there. Uh, no, they're not going to do that because they're in the casemates, I think. <clears throat> yeah, there's a 152. Cause there's four of them, but they're in casemate. And then they got 120s in port and starboard. So I don't think that's going to do it. Fort Wayne and Starboard Wayne. Let's go look at that. Those arcs. Ah, yeah, that definitely. Those both do. I'm still miss 
is missing like a mo. All right, so that missed horribly. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it at that for now. I'm gonna probably do a few turns on my own solo. Just kind of wanted to give you an idea. Um, let, let me pull in pull in some modifier tracks that I've used in other games of late. Uh, what are you? Here. Let's pull in the... Those as well as... I think I just need that. Alright, just to kind of show you what I just pulled in. These are modifier... Um, rulers that I made. I think I did it for um, far distant ships, I think. That's what I originally did it for. And let me scale that up. All right. So basically what I do is I use the Dawn, you know, I pull out the Dawn of the Battleships um, rules and the modifier sheet in particular. And, you know, as I, as I, as I go up and down, I tend, I just move the modifier as I go. It just makes it a lot easier to track that. Uh, this also is a aspect that Tom N had created when we did Battle of Lausanne um, a while back. So I'm gonna use that in some of these videos, etc. cetera. Um, it's gonna take a little bit. This fog needs to dissipate. Let me see what it says about that real quick let's see what it says that was wonderful clear okay so i think i just left it there for one and then i'll i'll dissipate it i'll dissipate it to a neg like a negative four if you have to fire through it next turn and then i'll take it off so as you can see this is this is a very a very interesting scenario um I'll occasionally do a video of a turn or two, and folks are more than welcome to jump in and just kind of take on a squadron. Just take it over for when I'm doing it. It's fine. I'm going to solo play the whole thing primarily. Um, one thing I'm noticing is, you know, I got all the information for all the Corfu um, challenge specific ships uh, readily available, but now I need to go and grab all the uh, Monroe's legacy information for all the other ships. And there's a pretty good amount of ships that are Monroe's legacy um, contingent, if you will. Um, so I need to kind of pull that together before we start getting into some of these, some of the longer range firing. So I'm going to end this here for now. Uh, that was just really an introduction and have a good day.